Hi everyone, it's Frank Walters here, and today we visit the island of Spiralonga, uh, which is in Crete, or just off Crete. An interesting subject for a watercolour. We've got this scene here. Uh, take a screen grab and maybe give it a go. Um, it's an interesting abstract sort of reference that should be fun to paint. Um, it's also backlit, so it requires a bit of a shadow wash. Um, anyway, I hope you enjoy the movie. Paint along with it if you can, and um, just enjoy the journey. Here's a 4B. I'm, this is my high white 300 GSM Saunders Waterford Rough, and I've been using this high white rough for, for almost a year now. I, I like it. Because it's high white, it just makes it look a bit more contemporary. If you've got the regular stuff, it is just slightly, slightly yellow, just slightly coloured, whereas this is really white. Where do I start here? Um, I've got this bit coming over there, and then this element here. I think that's about right, maybe just a little steeper. This is rocks and things there. This is the way that I do a, a composition. I think that's because you need that leading up to here. You've got that. You've got this big sort of big curve. Big curve. Yeah, I'm, I'm there at the moment, just looking at that. It's down there. This goes here. It's sort of here somewhere. There. There. I'm just doing the basic stuff. And then, yeah, there's rock pile. That's all it is, a rock pile. I'm going to draw things for the sake of it. I don't know. That sort of comes up a little bit, strangely. Anyway, that comes down there. Now we've got this. Just looking, just trying to see what's <laughs> what's going on there. My eyesight's not that great anymore, but I'm just trying to sort of. And then there's a funny angle down there. Oh, and there's looking at that, there's all sorts of things going on. Let's not get carried too carried away with that. Oh, this sort of arch down there. It's a bit of a crack here. And then this comes sort of here and down. Yeah, it's that crack. It's here. There's a light bit. Oh, I'm running out of space on this side a little bit. I think I'm all right. That's the problem when you start at one end, you can end up running out of space at the other. Can't quite see. There's a funny thing here. It looks like a, 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 a sort of torch or something, a light or I don't know, to light light this thing up. But I'm not going to paint that. It, I find it slightly like offensive. And why would you paint that? Maybe you will. Who knows? Just changing this. And there's something like a bit of a, a house down there. It's so close to the edge, I don't want to make anything of that. Again, the pinch point is here, I think. Um, the mountains. I don't like what I did. I just haven't got this 
shape there. Not happy with that. Sorry, I'm just... Sometimes things are, to me are important. And because you're doing it, that's why you're doing it pencil. I mean, to be able to change things if you wanted to. Just looking at there, I'm just looking, I'm here. I'm just showing you warts and all because these are good bits to sort of. It's funny, there's a funny pokey uppy thing there. I don't know what that is. Anywho, that's it. I don't want to do too much. Now, there's one other little thing here. It's where the the the, the edge of uh, that water's edge goes right to the top, and I don't want that. I either want it to end above or below. I don't want it touching that point because that is a a bit of a collision. That that those sort of things don't work well. They the eye leads towards that connection between that and that and they're touching and I don't like that it's it's like when people put true paint trees at the edge of the painting they don't work you know let the thing don't lead the eye off the page bring the eye into the, the middle of the of the painting it's really quite important um so I'm going to start lower down about here and come through there with that Mountain, and then this other mountain comes down, down here, something like that. Done all that very quickly, and again, it's just to show how these things, these things work. Right, first light wash. What am I going to use? Um, I think some cerulean blue. I'm going to use. Um, I would like to try different brushes so people can see how different brushes work. I've got all my, these, these are my um, mop style brushes. And you can always tell they're mop style because they've got the, the wire around them. They're, they're mop style and you can get them like really, really big, you know, for, for doing a wash or you can get them really small for, for doing the detail i mean i could do this painting sort of just using maybe that's a bit too big those two or i can use um this lovely number 10 uh brush series 99 rosemary and co sable which is equivalent to that or i could even use a bigger 14 sable rosemary and co so again these are these are these are sable brushes round because when you look at them that way they're round these two um are mop style and these two are sable style so but they both got fairly fine points this one in particular has got a lovely point so anyway let's do the wash with that Again, that was a 4B pencil, by the way, the drawing and a stable of rubber. And we get ourselves just, and, and when you're doing this drawing, when you're there painting on Pernay, you do that sort of fairly, fairly quickly. This is going to be an interesting one because I'm not quite sure how the detail is going to work in here. And I might, I might try something there. I might just give it a, give it a go, see what happens. Right. Um, Uh, need to there's two ways you can do a sky you can wet the whole thing and do wet in wet but i'm not going to do that um 
I just want to be really strong here at the edges and at the top and then come down to a white. So what I'll, what I'll do is I will mix some cerulean blue. Now, as much work goes on over here as there, <laughs> and again, if anybody's done oil painting, it's a bit like what you spend forever mixing oil paints. It seems to take so long and it takes like a millisecond just to put it on the canvas. So it can be a bit like that. Um, just more water. See, I'm trying to load this brush. This is a big mop, synthetic mop, but it takes up a lot of fluid, which is great. I don't want to, I don't want to sort of run out of fluid when I'm halfway through. I want everything here. So building up, you know, a big, that's why you need deep wells in your, you know, in your, in, in your painting tin. You don't want the tiny wells. And again, at Q Studio last night, a couple of new people have started, you know, really tiny little bit of paint on such a big area. And that's not good. So what I'm going to do, just going to come here. I keep running that through. It's very wet. Very wet itch. And then just paint that in the negative to there. Just going to get some water now. And again, pull that down to here. Again, there. It's almost white now to there yeah, so that's and try not to fiddle too much with um don't don't fiddle once you painted something just leave it don't go over it again it'll get muddy So I'm just checking that line, and that seems to have gone up a bit in my view. I could be wrong there, but. Again, I'm showing basic stuff. That's all it is, basic stuff. One of the other things we call, I think for watercolor is a bit of patience. You know, don't think, oh, I've got to get me dark, so I'm going to, no, well, hang back. Hang back a little bit. Oh, I forgot a bit. Sorry. That's a real important bit, a bit of blue here. It's good. I can't see and there's nothing else poking through. That's sort of about it. It's about right. I'm letting this dry before I then come back and do those those mountains. I don't think I've drawn that very well, but it, it doesn't matter. Nobody will ever say, oh, that mountain's not so tall, is it? Or well, how do you know? How do you know about it? Right, okay, let me um let me just clean the, the palette here. Again, it all looks quite straightforward, but then again. Painting is sort of quite straightforward. I'm, I'm rushing to do the first wash. Um, and my first wash, usually there are two colors that work really well with any landscape. One is cerulean blue, which is the color of sky on a beautiful day. Of course, you can use other blues um, if you like. 
if you really want to. But cerulean's a really a really good one. I started using a bit of watered down cobalt lately, and I quite like that. Or verdita is one of my blues that I I really like. Windsor blue, I mean, goes on and on, doesn't it? These different blues. Try and keep your palette simple. Don't go off on one with too many colours. You'll you'll totally and utterly confuse yourself. Uh, this is raw sienna, which is a lovely, warm uh, contrast to the, the the cerulean cool cerulean blue. So I'm just basically shoving that because this sky is still wet. I'm making sure I don't touch because if I do, it will it will leach. It will just leach. Just going to leave a bit of white on the top of that. Again, more. So, it can be quite simple, doesn't it, really? But watercolour is simple. You know, we make, we're, the, we're the ones that make it really complicated. Just being a bit careful around here. Don't want any leaching going on just yet. This is what I'm putting down. This raw sienna, there it is in the tin. Raw sienna is such an important earth color. It's a wonderful way just to get the painting up and running, you know, because otherwise you're confused with all the things that are going on and nothing seems to make sense. It's a great local color because it's very light, much lighter than yellow ochre. I always prefer. I always prefer raw sienna to yellow ochre. It just seems to stay vivid. It's got nice luminosity. It's putting a bit of white around that. Some bits here. Now I'm going to come down. As I come towards the, the foreground, I'm starting to move to my cad orange. And I'm getting a little bit of mango going here in my colour. A couple of white bits. I'm now going to hither and yon just look at a few little bits of just bits of red. You notice I haven't put any darks down. This is called the first light wash. It's what we always do. There's never, there's no other way of doing this, as far as I can see. You know, and all the John Singer Sergeant, all the greats did this. Let's get some more of that orange. Going. I'm doing this because it's still sort of wet in wet. Okay. There is a glaze coming over this. There is definitely a glaze. You can see where some of the wet needs to dry. You get a bit of cauliflower 
I, d I don't mind that. That is the end of the first light wash on this particular painting. All these, all these darks are yet to come, but on the fascia of that, there's going to be a shadow over all of that, believe it or not, because this is all in shadow. See here? It's only here where it comes out, and just little bits there and there where it's catching the light. Painting is all about light. It's all about values of light and dark. And it, I, you know, I normally call it value. And that's what value means. It's that value. Let me go back to that Cerulean. Let's have a look. So now's the time we can paint in the negative. I'm not going to do that until that's dry. So, where do we go now? Where do we go now? I think now's the time to start doing some mark making, as it were. So, I'm going to... This shadow over here will come a little bit a bit later. It's not not yet. I'm just gonna get some very dark sepia, which is my darkest warm color. I don't have black. I have either dark warm sepia or I have some French ultramarine, which is blue. And I mix the French ultramarine with the sepia. And I will get a neutral gray, a very dark neutral gray. It's almost going black. And again, that happened last night at Q Studio. People, ooh, where did you get that black from? It's not black. You mix it, it becomes very, very sort of, very strong. You know, it's sort of lovely for... Mark, mark making. I just feel I need a bit here somehow. Just running around these sort of. Sort of shadow bit. Right, let me put that here so you can see what I'm. What I'm doing. It's nice and dry now. And this is the bit the this is called drawing with a brush. Why on earth would you draw every bit of detail with a pencil? What are you going to do then? Color in those little pencil marks? <laughs> you'd, be, you'd be here all day. How does that work? I'm just going to vary things here because I'm seeing. Just adding a bit of orange. I don't know why. I'm just seeing something. Sort of there. Just looking at that bit. Again, do do give this a go. Don't don't be put off 
by, oh, it looks really complicated. About it. It's your interpretation. It's not, you're not trying to do a facsimile. It doesn't work like that. Some mark making. I don't overdo this because I've done this myself. I've, I've like started doing mark making and then it just never ends. And I just make so many marks that it becomes a, a linear type of painting. It's no longer a watercolor. It's one of the great, one of the great dangers. Just want to put in a little bit of. some shapes going on in here. Little shapes. Yeah, just, this is where it all becomes, this is the bit that you'd start adding To your painting. Yeah, I'm drawing with the brush. That's not, I can't. Yeah, I'm not good enough to be able to follow this exactly. I can't do it, but I'm doing an impression of it. And when you're painting on plein air, that's all you're doing is an impression. You're not doing any more. Let's carry on here. All right, let's get back to, uh, I'm keeping an eye on time. This is where it starts getting, I get tight on time now. It's funny, some paintings move a lot quicker than I think they're going to, and other ones take longer, and I can never know why. Yeah, it, it's just playing with a brush. And it will sort of create its own look.
but just looking again it, it's very much like that painting i did last week uh, with the palace knossos palace where i was with the rocks i wasn't quite sure what to, to do there Bit of brown. When I say brown, I mean burnt sienna. To remember to tell you what I'm what I'm using. A little bit of green down there, I'm just watching the time again. <laughs> it's sort of, yeah, can he do it? Right, that's that's that. Right, um, on here, there's two things to finish. There's that hill. Then there's the, the shadow glaze. There's a glaze going over all of that, believe it or not. And then a bit over here. And then there's some really quite dark accents. I might have to go back to my almost this dark. In fact, I might just do that now. Do that now. Yeah, just a bit of, I, it needs to be super dark for it to work. And this is how you paint, but you will establish your own style, but it, it's really good, get, get a decent brush like this. Yeah, get a decent rosemary and co, a, a sable, uh, um, proper sable. Um, it's really nice to use. And some extra little marks. It's all this raw time. I don't know what that's going on in there. I, it doesn't matter. I just want to end up with a nice sort of quick, quick painting. See, I'm fiddling now. I'm no I'm fiddling. Stop it. All this will be under. Okay, let's stop. Come back to that. Let's go back to Cerulean. Okay. 
Maybe it was down a bit. Just looking looking at that side of sometimes I can't see things. Right, I'll just do my shadow wash now. This is the very last thing. You still with me? Good. Two minutes. Just the shadow wash. And again, I'm just showing you the process. That's all I'm doing. I'm not expecting you to paint, paint like me. I'm just showing you what can be done and how to think about it and just, just remember the order of things. Right, French ultramarine, because we use a load of cerulean. So I don't want to use cerulean, I want French ultramarine. More water, a little bit of, Glycerin, more water, more blue. See, I'm having to do this, more water, more blue. People don't mix enough and then they run out. Come on, let's have a look. There's a bit of light. Oh, hang on. Something's out of there. Oh, wait. Just there, there's a bit of light coming through. So I want to try and put the light on the top of that. Yeah, and I'm just little slivers of light. Yeah. Getting a certain quality to it. It's amazing how it starts to meld, if that's the right word. It's actually starting to meld for me. Just different weights of blue, a thick bit there. Lovely. Yeah, it's just making sense of mm -hmm. I 
Right, here's the finished painting. A few little tweaks here and there, and it's done. I uh, hope you enjoyed my demo, and please visit my website, which is frankwatercolors.com. Hope to see you again soon. Take care. Bye.